I'm Brad Carr, and I'm the CEO visionary of Sonicare. I started the company in 2004. I was working for a company that was in textile air conditioning and filtration, and textiles left the United States. The job I had, or the career I had, ran out. So why did I do it? Because I needed an income. That was really it. I thought, well, maybe I can make enough money that I can continue to live in Winston-Salem. I had no idea that it would grow into as much fun as it is today. When I started the company, I had a partner, and when the housing bubble burst, he wanted to get out of it. Long story short, he told me I could buy him out. He called me on Christmas Eve, so that was not really good for the holidays, all that stress. But two months later, a large tissue company called me. How they found out about my company, I have no idea, and said they needed thousands of our fans in their tissue plants because of OSHA. And that was really the beginning of having the volume we needed to take off. The first fan we started with was the Sonic Air 1.0. It was really more of a commercial duty fan, not an industrial duty. At that point, we're just in dry cleaners, laundries, and textiles. And really, for those industries, it was very effective. At that point, I asked my son-in-law, Jordan, to come with me to the clean show, which is laundry and dry cleaners, because I needed someone to help me. And so we had me and Jordan, and then we had his first baby, Bradley, in a stroller, and his wife and my wife, all in a 10 by 10 booth. At that booth, I had a fan that I could roll in and a stand that it would stay on. And Centos shows up, I think it was the executive vice president, said, hey, we need these in our laundries. We've been cited by OSHA, but we've got to improve this. And so a couple of engineers actually with Centos made several trips to our plant as we innovated and uh, came up with, at that point we called it the tilter, now it's the mobile flex. They serve a particular need within a dry cleaning uniform plant. And we pretty much limit it to lint. But yeah, that was a, quite an experiment. In fact, I think that our customer thinks he's the one that designed it. And that's fine with me. He certainly was the impetus for designing it. We learned early on all dust is not created equal. We had tried the 1.0 in a OSB plant. It just would not clean that well, and we realized we need something more powerful. For us to meet what we needed on the industrial basis, we had to start really from scratch. So at that point, myself and Jordan decided we would come up with a two horsepower fan. We also realized in the marketplace there was a need for a smaller footprint fan that would go in ceilings where you've got cranes and things like that. We really developed both fans at the same time, and we continued to make changes even on that original 2.0 model. But we did have a problem with that model, and the biggest problem we had was noise. The primary thing we did with the Pro 200 was reduce the noise. But at the same time, we changed to a three-phase gear motor, which is much more reliable than a single-phase gear motor. Got rid of the capacitors, transformers, fuses, all that kind of stuff. So we came out with a fan that was much more reliable. As we reduced the noise, we actually improved the fan efficiency, five or 10%. So we got a little more performance out of it at the same time. I'm wired for innovation. I just, I like making things better, really. One of those innovations was our customer took our fan, turned it upside down, and we cleaned underneath his conveyors. And so that's, we came up with the auto sweep, particularly for applications where we're just trying to move dust on a floor that's in a location that's hard to get to. I grew up in Wichita, Kansas. Every summer, there would be like a dozen grain elevators blow up. Because I grew up around the grain industry, in the farming industry, and I knew that that of all industries needed our product more than any of them, because they have more problems with combustible dust. We talked to UL, and initially UL said, we will not certify a fan for hazardous <laughs> duty because you just blow the dust everywhere. They went into plants and they saw them using our fans and they realized no, we don't blow dust everywhere. We really create a barrier overhead so that we disrupt the thermal current so the dust can't get up there. So it was like a three-year journey, working with UL, making change after change. We finally got through, and at the beginning of this year, we launched that. One particular customer put it in, and his words, he said, it's a game changer. Now we are introducing the three horsepower fan, the Pro 300, and the need for that is we are now getting into heavier dust because you need a different horsepower based on the type of dust that you've got. And right here in our facility, we have the testing capabilities. And we measure the densities and we measure the particle distributions. There's a lot that goes into defining the dust. We take combustible fugitive dust seriously. That is all we do. 
as who we are. And so that's really what's driven our engineering is not just designing systems, but understanding how you move dust. I mean, I'm almost embarrassed with what the technology looked like 20 years ago compared to today. But everything's got to evolve. What's gonna look like 20 years from now, I would say different. I just, I know it's gonna be way different, which is exciting.